What's going on my Welty family? And welcome back. Today is a very special day as well. I'm not gonna be doing the lesson today. My very, very good friend and our lead instructor over here in the evening shift, Michael Tomek, is gonna be doing an AWS D1.1 structural test for y'all. Stick all the way out with the backing strip. So I'm gonna get out of here, do what I gotta do. I'm gonna let Mike take over, all right? Whoa. Hey guys, Marco Tomek here with South Coast Welding Academy. I'm the lead instructor for the evening shift here. And today I'm gonna to be showing you all the AWS D1.1 structural code test in 3G position with the backing strip. Now, we're gonna go over here to the fitment because that's the most important part. Let's go. All right guys, so the machine I'm gonna be using today is a CST uh, 280 Miller. I'm gonna be tacking it around 90 amps. I'm gonna put six tacks on this backing strip. I'm gonna place two on the top corner two in the center and then two on the bottom to make sure that I know that the plate's not gonna move or the backing strip, all right? You wanna keep a little bit of pressure on that backing strip when you're tacking so it won't move. Go back up towards the top. Bottom corner, and two in your center. All right, guys, that's how you fit up a 3G with the backing strip. Let's get to it. All right, guys, got it tacked up in the 3G position today. Here today, and um, I'm using a. 7018 330 second rod. I'm gonna be running my route at 90 amps today. And the angle that I'm gonna have is about 10 to 15 degrees aiming up, going up the plate, okay? All right guys, when you start, you wanna start on the bottom of the backing strip and then work your way up to your uh, beveled plate. Now the motion I'm using is a side to side motion, pausing on the sides, making sure that I'm melting the my three, um, my half inch plate with my backing strip. Just a simple side to side, pause on each side for about a second and a half. So I know that I'm getting good penetration and a good weld in there. Remember, keep a nice tight arc. Keep your angle 10 degrees facing up at all times. Now when tying in, I start above my where I stop, come back around in the sixth motion, and then continue doing my side to side with pausing on the side all the way up the plate. Make sure I remember to pause on those sides so you know you're melting the plate to the backing strip so you get nice reinforcement, nice penetration. You don't want no undercut or anything like that. You don't want no slag inclusions or any of that inside your plate. Once again, start above where I stop, come back around in a six motion and continue doing the side to side motion. Once again, come back around. And when you're doing the backing strip uh, test, you wanna make sure you don't stop right there on the edge of the plate, but you wanna go all the way to on top on the backing strip. So you wanna start on the backing strip, 
and you want to end on the backing strip just like that pop off all right now starting with the hot pass again start on the backing strip I did crank up my amps to 95 amps we're using the same technique pausing on the sides make sure we're letting that puddle build and watching that puddle Side to side. You want to say about two seconds on each side. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Make sure you spend an even amount of time on both sides so you have an even bead all the way up. Once again, the tie ins are the same. Come down and around. Number six, and then continue your motion all the way up the plate. Once again, come down around the outside of the circle that you just ended. Continue your motion back again, side to side. Make sure you spend time in the sides and not in the center. Once again, you don't want to stop right here on the edge of the plates. You want to go all the way off onto your backing strip. Just like that. Then pop off. Now onto the fields. Again, start on your backing strip and work your way up to your bevel. Me personally, I use a 332nd. But if you are on a time crunch and it is a time test, if you want to fill it a little quicker, you can use 1 8. And 1 8 rods, I prefer to run them between 120 to 130 amps. But use the same motion, side to side. Let's see, come around, start your motion all over again. If you focus on those walls, the most important part is those walls. Come back around. Start your motion all over again. Make sure you're keeping your rod at that 10 degrees angle in the upward motion, okay? You don't want to have your rod straight at the plate or pointing down. You want to be pointed up because you're going uphill. Me personally, when I'm fitting up, I like to weave my beads and pause on the sides. But if you prefer and like stringer beads, by all means, go ahead and run your stringers up. 
but for the hot and the first two fills I do like running weave beads just so I can put that extra meat in there and then I'll come back with stringer beads to flush out my plate Once again, I use a sixth motion to tie in on my welds, and I go to the toe of the weld, right there on the edge. Come back around to the edge of the wheel and continue my motion all the way up my plate. Make sure you're favoring the sides, not the center. If you favor the center, your puddle is going to want to drop and sag. You don't want that. You want a nice, flat, even bead all the way up your plate. Once again, don't finish early off your plate. You want to make sure you go all the way to the top and on to the backing strip. Now I'm going to run my stringers to flush it out and I'm going to use the same motion side to side pausing on the edge of the bevel to the middle of the weld Again, six motion on the edge and continue my motion. Come back around, start the motion all over again. Make sure that you're watching your part of going half of your bead, the rest on the bevel. You don't want to go over the bevel, you just want the part hit the edge and fuse into it. Pop off. Now for the other side, same thing. Half of the weld to the bevel. Okay, you want to make sure everything fuses in nice and together. Okay, as one. You don't want to create no valleys, no cracks, no inclusions inside your weld. You want to 100% melt it together, melt.
again do a number six come back around start your motion over again and remember keep your rod angle at 10 degrees up okay back around start the motion all over again again make sure you're favoring the sides and not the center Same thing with this side. You want to make sure you stop on the backing strip. You don't want to end early. You want to make sure you have 100% weld in your bevels all the way to your backing strip. All the way to your backing strip and pop off. Alright guys, now we're starting our cap. Me personally, I like drawing me a nice little guideline with a grinder on the edge of the bevel. So I know I know how far to go over. So I won't go over that 16th mark on the bevel. Me personally, I like throwing a weave bead. A, well, stringer beads that are weaved for my cap. I just go side to side. No pausing this time. Just watching my puddle melt into the wall so I won't get no undercut. Running at about 92 amps. Again with my tie, I'm gonna come back around to the edge and start my motion all over again. Make sure you keep your rod at 10 degrees angle because we're going up the plate. Come back around to the edge. And start to weld all over again. Even on your cap, you don't want to stop at the end of the plate. You want to go all the way to your backing strip. So you can be at 100% weld. Again, we're starting on the backing strip and working our way up. On this one, you want to watch your bead fuse into your first bead of your cap. Again, at 92 amps, doing the zigzag motion, side to side.
once again on the tie-ins, you're going to come around the edge, start your motion all over. Like the number six. Remember to finish off on your backing strip. Now we're working on the last bead of the cap. This one you gotta pay attention to the both sides of your bead. Just cause you're trying to resist getting undercut on the bevel side. And then also you gotta make sure you're 50-50 on your second beat of the cap. Still burning at 92 amps. And don't forget to let your plate cool down before you throw the third and final beat of the cap. Let it cool down for about 10 to 15 minutes. Once again you undo the Six motion, come back around and go on with the welding process. Really focusing that puddle. Make sure that you're not getting no undercut. Staying inside the little grind mark for guidance. back around start your welding process all over and again make sure that you finish off on the backing strip and not on the plate you want hundred percent weld whenever you're doing a backing strip test pop off all right guys there you have it that's the AWS D1.1 structural code test 3G with the backing strip by all means, I'm nowhere near perfect. Of course, I can be always be better, all right? Now, if this did help you in any way, please like and subscribe. And if you would like to follow me on my Instagram or Snapchat, feel free to. Thank you.